see the screen. So I'm going to go through a little bit and again, just like Brian did, uh, what was to be and where we're at today and then a little a brief look at um, just at the, the higher level. Sometimes uh, we've done a couple of webinars earlier this year when we had the uh, drop in dramatic drop in price and production and what that impacts were as I've been working on doing forecasting for the counties and cities going forward. Uh, one of the things that's uh, a little bit different in now is having to really look at production levels and I'll talk about that uh, when we get to that. So this is um, This was the forecast where we had for the local political size it was supposed to be $661 million going out to the oil and gas county cities, schools and townships and you can see how the buckets were supposed to fill out um, $1.4 billion in oil tax revenue to fill the buckets, whether that's general fund and all the way down to Operation Prairie Dog in the SIP for the Strategic Investment Improvement Fund. So what it is now is a lot different picture. Uh, I put this together where we show the buckets and right now the yellow bars on this chart is actually showing where we're at. Um, we are um, not even completely done with filling the general fund, the 400 million that's to the general fund total. Uh, that should fill this uh, month based on uh, historical and you can see I put a chart here where it shows what the oil revenues going to the buckets were and how we um, based on forecast it's about supposed to be about 65 million dollars a month going into these buckets. Um, we dropped down to right around 10 million dollars in July that was our low point. Um, it is obviously trending back up but we're right around that 25 million dollars a month to fill the buckets. So by the end of this month, we should be have the general fund filled and potentially most of that Lignite Research Council bucket, that $10 million there, will be full um, from the end of October. Then it will start filling um, Operation Prairie Dog. Uh, part of that will probably some dollars going into that bucket uh, in uh, in October and then potentially filling in November with those dollars then being able to go out um, to the local political subdivisions in uh, December or January just depending on the timing of that. So it's been a dramatic swing in that. One of the other things I would point out on this chart is if you do the math come let's just say January and I'm at 30 million dollars a month for the buckets. That means I've got six months left in the biennium and actually technically eight because of the way that the oil taxes are two, laid by two months. And so if I take eight times 30, that's 240 million. So that 240 million is what would be in this, that first SIF bucket of 400 million. So that's roughly where we're probably going to end to somewhere in the neighborhood of 200 and, um, 240. If um, price and production stay up a little bit, we could see, you know, up into that 280. But there, there's really no scenario that I have seen and working with um, others in the forecasting um, environment. Uh, there's really no scenario to see where that strategic investment improvement fund bucket of 400 will completely fill this biennium. That's not exactly happy news to hear, but um, that's that's the reality of it. And that's where it leads to some discussion about Prairie Dog that I'll get into um, next. So the current forecast, and Ryan showed this slide um, with the uh, price and production and where, th where things were at and what's forecasted going forward. Uh, I listen into the Revenue Advisory Committees in the uh, um, different meetings. Uh, Legislative Council uh, has IHS that provides forecasting. And if you have a chance to listen to that in that meeting, 
the legislature, legislators sitting on that committee definitely um, are probably going to move this line down when they put their forecast number together, I would say. I think they, they're they having a hard time. IHS's numbers were much more pessimistic than uh, the OMB based off of industry input and uh, Moody's, IHS had a little bit more pessimistic outlook. So I would envision that when an updated forecast comes out with, from the legislature, that we will see some lower numbers on price and production, specifically on production, because if we're not completing wells at the rate that we need to complete to maintain production, that production is probably going to decline some more. So what that means for the local political subdivisions is on GPT revenue, and this is just an image, again, of where things were at for uh, gross production tax specifically. The green line on this table or chart is what legislative forecast was. That yellow line is where we um, were at, and then where it splits into the multiple lines is the forecast. And so that top forecast of um, blue line is based off of that new legislative one where the OMB forecast, that's where the revenues would be. Uh, the other ones are some varying scenarios with production actually um, being, having a decline in production being more in that 1.1 to 1 million uh, barrels a day production in price in the mid thirties to low thirties. Um, when you look at the headline regarding uh, global impacts with COVID, we're seeing, you know, the focus is obviously here in the US, we look at our numbers, but if you look um, across the globe, there are other countries that are experiencing, if you want to call it second waves and stuff. And so what that's going to do in regards to driving demand um, reductions potentially that could um, impact our production level, but also price is something that we really have to watch. So we looked, Ryan put up a table that had everything. I just broke that down and actually the next slide is that same table. But I just think I like to look things in the numbers way, looking at percentages instead of just looking at the table and comparing, pulling out some of that information. So the original forecast or the revised forecast that has come out for the rest of this biennium, oil tax revenue is down $1.4 billion. You know, if you want to simply look at that, think back to what the forecast in where everything was at. Now granted, oil tax revenues go to a lot of different places. We have the constitutional funds, um, legacy fund, resources trust fund, common school trust fund, foundation aid, but that $1.4 billion, that's the same amount of money that fills all of the buckets. That's what was forecasted this last biennium for all of the buckets. So we basically lost all of the, you could say you lost all of the buckets if you wanted to look at it in a comparative way. We're down 30% in tax revenue. Those of you that um, are having to deal with budget reductions and stuff, you're seeing that in at the local level, it's even greater than 30%, um, obviously. And um, for the future forecast, we're actually looking at, again, a decline in those revenues. We're looking at, based off of the revised $383 billion dollars or million, that's just a type of million, another 11% reduction. So we don't see revenues at the state level of forecasting and the revenue projections do not see revenues coming back. This is that same table that uh, Ryan shared. I highlighted, you know, those, the counties and cities, the local political subdivisions. Original forecast was that 661 million. Revised is just shy of 500 million. And right now the projection is right around 430 for next biennium. As I mentioned, I would not be surprised to see a revised forecasts coming out that will put this number even a little bit lower. It could even go below um, based on some of those scenarios that I showed earlier on the slides. Um, 
with the different price and production scenarios, this gets to under 400 million for the local political subdivisions. Also highlighting the Operation Prairie Dog and the Legacy Fund, those two lines, Operation Prairie Dog, to fill those buckets is that 250 million, the revised is just that first bucket, the 30.4, um, and the projection for next biennium would be that, that but if the buckets stay the same, and that's one of the things that when we're looking at this projection and kind of all of these different funds, realize that those buckets get adjusted every biennium. They've been tweaks to the order of the buckets, how much goes into each bucket. And so um, don't hold that as a end all be all that that is exactly what the um, amount will be because um, those structures quite possibly, and I would say most likely will change in regards to how the buckets fill specifically for Operation Prairie Dog. So this is just a look um, based off of those forecasts. If we were to plug that in based off of um, current production or the last six months production averages, what the various counties would get. And this is in the past, like I said, we have, Put together, I put together forecasts that show the individual counties and communities um, what they have um, potential. I just did the counties on this, and what I was talking about earlier and putting together this forecast, I'm trying to get it updated in regards to the where production has gone. When we shot, saw the shut ins for um, the oil production back in April, May, June and what wells came offline, what wells have come back online, it's really shifted uh, the percentage of production in counties. So these, even these numbers don't, you know, obviously any forecasting numbers when we're trying to forecast out two years um, into the future, I, I would highly encourage you don't use them as, your, as the gospel in regards to putting together any budgets, but it is something to, um, just as a base to kind of look at where we're at, it, it's really um, hitting some of the lower counties, lower producing counties harder. Obviously, McKinsey, Montreal, Dunn, and Williams as the big four, we're seeing large percentage drops, but we're seeing greater percentage drops, and then those percentages that equates to the dollars for those other counties, like the, the Berks and the Bowens and those types of things definitely um, have an impact. So what I have here is just a couple of things to give you an idea in kind of summing this all up that there's really no expectation in the near term that we're going to see improvements in revenues. The oil demand and production, um, as I talk about, we don't see really any improvement there. Even if the OMB forecast holds, you saw that's a flat line of production. We're not seeing a growth in production there. Um, and oil price, we really see oil price staying roughly where it's at, being fairly stagnant because due to market balancing, you know, even if demand starts to pick up for our production to really grow, uh, that's going to take a long-term seeing that price increase. And when we have the OPEC countries and Russia that can bring production online much quicker to take that market share I see, don't see that the oil price is really going to um, have any significant change in the near term there either. When we do look at funding options uh, going forward, uh, Ryan mentioned the legacy fund. That's something that the legislature will be talking about. Um, it's something fairly significant in regards to potential revenue and what could be done with that. Uh, both the earnings, uh, you know, I've questions get asked. In fact, I was on a call yesterday and a question got asked, will the legislature, because of this downturn and the need to support communities and everything, would they vote to um, access the principal of the legacy fund? Um, you know, so those questions are being asked. The legislators I talk to, there's no appetite for that, but that's not to say that things change and we'll see what types of conversations come out from that. But there's two pieces of the legacy fund to talk about there for funding. Uh, bonding, 
is being discussed in regards to at the state level paying for some infrastructure um you know not using bonding to balance the budget i think that's a key differentiator here is they're not using bonding to balance the budget but it would be to fund um, major infrastructure type projects looking at the conversation you know if you've got a two and a half to three percent annual inflation rate on construction and you've got bond rates at roughly one six to one seven you're actually saving the state money by paying for that project today versus waiting until you have that cash on hand which in the current revenue scenarios when you think SIF isn't even going to fill which is where they find a lot of those big infrastructure projects waiting 10 years to build that um, pay for that infrastructure that compounding effect is pretty significant obviously uh, it gets thrown out there our legislative environment isn't really keen on new taxes or tax increases um, but there are those that are being talked about for example that there, there are conversations about should they um, a gas tax increase to pay for um, roads and bridges that that's been discussed um, you know we'll see what that means but those are some of the things that are out there being discussed it's going to really come down to what the numbers kind of look like come January, February um, to really see, I think when it comes to some of the significant budget bills going into the session and the revenue projections, it's really gonna be based on, they're gonna, it's gonna be a wait and see approach going into the legislative session till towards the end of the session to see what things really are looking like. And then just in closing, a couple of points for Western Dakota Energy, you know, I think I, I bolded it here and highlighted if I could have made this, had time to make this animated and flashing. I think it's one of the biggest things for Western Dakota Energy to recognize is that last legislative section removed any sunsets related to the gross production tax formula and distributions. And how hindsight being 2020, that is probably the most significant win that the association has gotten to not have to be going into this current, this upcoming legislative session, working to um, fight to maintain funding levels. Because we've seen um, the reduction in funding. Remember our funding, that gross production tax, it's all percentage based. There's no, it's not the hard dollars that, oh, there were $661 million to go to the oil counties. No. We're seeing that reduction just like the state has in regards to that revenue. And the local communities are seeing, you know, take Williston, for example, not to, um, you know, pour, pour fuel on the fire, but, you know, their sales tax numbers are dramatically down. And that's another piece of their revenue that they use to fund infrastructure and pay for general government. And so, you know, it's kind of a double whammy uh, for those communities. So not having to fight um, to maintain funding because that sunset was gone is a huge thing. I also highlight here that Operation Prairie Dog in the stream of buckets does not impact gross production tax funding. It in no way impacts the dollars going out to the members of Western Dakota Energy. Uh, last session, it was all part of the same bill in getting Operation Prairie Dog those infrastructure dollars to non-oil and gas producing counties. It was all the same bill, House Bill 1066, but in no way does it have any tie to the actual gross production tax distributions. And I wanna just emphasize that because that question has come up in various meetings that uh, Jeff and I have been in. One of the other things that we wanna look at um, is construction grants and loans for schools. Um, Previously, we've had some oil impact grants that don't impact the K-12 funding formula and potentially how can we get more dollars even into the school infrastructure loan fund um, so that there's uh, more dollars available at lower cost for schools. We know with enrollments where they're at, you know, that's going to be an issue, but there are still construction needs because we've been, a number of our communities have been trying to get schools done for a number of years. And so even though enrollment might stay, doesn't mean that they don't need new classroom space because they're over capacity right now. The other piece that we're tracking is CARES funding. Is there anything 
potentially that comes down from the feds. Um, you know, negotiations on that. Uh, I think you've got a better chance of picking Powerball numbers than you do knowing if the federal government's actually going to come up with a package here. Uh, obviously, my opinion, but it's we all saw what happened yesterday um, in regards to the president's position and then change of position and negotiations and stuff like that. Um, so it's kind of a wait and see approach. And that's also even at the state level, there's a wait and see approach to some of the programs and projects in regards to funding if the feds are gonna do anything. So with that, that's why I had to share. I will see here and if there's uh, any questions or comments, I don't see anything um, right now in the chat. So I think I actually went a little over, but we do have time for a break.